Good morning. My name is Reverend Christopher Werps, and I'm one of the pastors here at North Scottsdale United Methodist Church. And on behalf of the family and friends of William Hood, I'd like to welcome you to this celebration of life, his memorial service this morning. We come together today as a community of support, love, and shared memory to celebrate Bill's life and legacy. In times like these, we lean on one another for comfort and solace. And as we share stories, laughter, and tears, let us remember that it is in the spirit of love and connection that we find strength to face the pain of loss. Today, we are here to honor Bill's memory, to celebrate his life, and to express our gratitude for the time that we all shared with him. And as we gather, let us be mindful of the presence of God, who is with us in our grief and who comforts us in our sorrow. We are reminded of the eternal love that surrounds us and the hope that endures even in the face of loss. In the midst of our sadness, let us find comfort in the company of one another in the knowledge that we are not alone. During this service, we are going to hear from those who knew Bill best, his family and his friends, who will share personal memories and stories of his life. We will listen to scripture readings that resonate with the family, and we'll hear some songs that held special significance to him. And we will reflect on the spiritual themes that emerge from the sacred texts that we read from and the stories that we hear. And as we embark upon this journey of remembrance, let us hold one another in our hearts, supporting and uplifting each other through this difficult time. And together we will find comfort in our shared memories and love that binds us all. I invite you now to join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, we come before you today in our grief and with heavy hearts. We ask for your presence and comfort as we celebrate Bill's life. May our time together be filled with love, hope, and healing. Help us to find the strength in one another and in the memories we share. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. The family has selected two passages from Scripture that they would like to be read this morning. Our first comes from the Hebrew Scriptures in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me, and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forsake my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, Get understanding. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Listen, my son. Accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. And when you walk, your steps will not be hampered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and get go on your way. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. The path of righteousness is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of wickedness is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. 
My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight and keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one whose whole body and above else. Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. And let your eyes look straight ahead. And fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all of your ways. And do not turn to the right or left and keep your foot from evil. The second scripture passage that the family has selected comes from the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. I invite you now to read or pray in unison the Congregational Prayer of Illumination as it is printed in your bulletins. Let us pray. Be free, be strong, be proud of who you have been, know that you will be mourned and missed, that no one can replace you, that you have loved and are beloved. Move beyond form, flowing like water, feeding on sunlight and moonlight, radiant as the stars in the night sky. Pass the gates, enter the dark without fear. Return to the womb of life to be reborn. Rest, heal, grow young again. Be blessed. Amen. Now the uh, family has prepared a slideshow uh, set to a song that is, was significant to Bill. Uh, the song Just Breathe by Pearl Jam. And I invite you to uh, turn your attention to the screen as the slideshow is presented.
invite uh, Jay, Scott, James, Deb, and Daylene, and anyone else in the family that would like to come forward uh, for a time of sharing. I thought it was going to be fine until I saw that. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm Jay. I'm the oldest son, if nobody knows. Uh, <coughs> so I'll start with, uh, I met my dad 61 years ago. Uh, that's a common theme that, that I'm getting from a lot of people is, you know, I've I, I known your dad for 20 years or 25 years, and we were joking that we should start that drinking game <laughs> where you hear that, where you hear a phrase. And, and you have to drink when you hear the phrase, and that phrase we'd have been drunk three or four <laughs> times over, I think. So a little bit about my dad. Um, as you, if you've ever been to his office, you probably realize that my dad was stuck in the 70s. And uh, we used to joke, you know, hey, Dad, the 70s calls, they want their office back. <laughs> but, but what I didn't realize, he actually was applying that to his business philosophy as well. So... His whole business philosophy was stuck in the 70s, which we're finding out is in, uh, isn't such a bad thing. Um, uh, my dad kind of stumbled. He, uh, uh, he kind of came from humble beginnings. And uh, I know at what time, I mean, I didn't know this when I was little. I kind of figured this out when I got older, that uh, he, always wanted, he always wanted better for his family. And he wanted better for other people. He didn't want to. He didn't want us to go through the struggles that he went through. And uh, <coughs> he was he was a uh, an achiever. I don't know if anybody he went he went through Boy Scouts and beyond. He got he got an eagle, but then there's awards after that that he got. Um, I found a letter from the governor that he got for his accomplishments. He was active in JCs. That picture where he's jumping in the pool, I think that's from when we were here in Phoenix, or you were here in Phoenix, and, and he jumped in the pool. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, was, he was involved with JCs and Kiwanis. And so what I kind of figured out from that is he loved to be involved in, in things. And uh, he, got, he, he, got, he was an achiever, and he achieved a lot through those. Um, then, then as we got older, I kind of, I won't go into the circumstances, but for we kind of drifted apart for, for many, many years. And then uh, I have a lot of faith in God and Jesus, and I, I think that by this past, he kind of brought it, brought him back to me. And uh, for the last couple of years, we, uh, we were getting a lot closer. Um, um, I, get, I think what I was talking about is business. Uh, the way he uh, was stuck in the 70s. Is, and I don't, maybe all you figured it out. He wasn't about taxes. Taxes was just a vehicle for a bigger thing, which is uh, he just loved the interactions with people. Um, he, he, he lived for those relationships. And uh, I belong to a church, and it kind of, to me, what it means is we have a, we have a whole motto in, in our church. It's called Love Beyond. So he was, he, he loved you, but he was, he was loving beyond. He was loving everybody, everybody the same way. And uh, so I'm going to probably ramble on a little bit. But um, another thing about dad, he was, uh, and maybe you know, he was a true blue born in, I should say true red, born Nebraska corn husker. <laughs> and so I know I look underdressed. But there's a reason for it, <laughs> um, because he just he loved the Huskers, and that's one thing that that we had in common is our our love for Nebraska football and everything Nebraska. And I tell people I loved, and it was a privilege to grow up in Nebraska, but I just wouldn't want to live there anymore. Um, let's see, I find my notes, and. Uh, But I just, I guess, I just want to leave you guys with knowing that um, he didn't look at anybody as a client. 
He looked at all of you as friends and, and family. So I like to say that you're part of our family. And if you take anything away from his life, I'm sure he'd love that you, you take that you take that that caring and loving and just pass it on to somebody else. Just to go out and love beyond also. Um, and one last thing. Uh, I can explain this box back here that he's, I, a fourth of that is in there. <laughs> but uh, the box is not finished because that's, that's kind of the way uh, he left some unfinished business. If all of you had to come pick up your tax returns. <laughs> And growing up, Dad did a lot of projects that he he get about 75% done. So <laughs> that's the reason it's not quite done. <laughs> and so just one last thing, Dad, just like go Big Red. <laughs> All right, I'll see if I can get this closer. No, I'm going to pass that around. <clears throat> I'm going to stay on script here. And thanks, Tiffany, for putting my random thoughts last night into words. <laughs> It was through my dad's death that I truly gained a better understanding of the man he was. There was an outpouring of love and sorrow that filled his office after the news of his passing. Through his clients who evolved into friends, I learned of a man who was not just dedicated to his job, but a person of service who sought to help others. While I saw the majority of his life spent as an accountant and the tax man, I now see how this was far more than a career. It was a calling that gave him purpose. Preparing taxes is what he did, but touching lives with his generosity and compassion, desire to connect and serve, is what lives on in the lives of many. There were countless stories that came from a community he created. What has been reflected by the diverse group of people that have come through his office doors since his passing is he was a man of kindness and who gave selflessly to a greater good. He sought to bring order and calm to clients in stressful situations. He strived to be helpful, honest, and ethical in running of his business. He turned the experience of getting taxes done into a social outing <clears throat> with conversation and laughter. I've called my dad a workaholic, but my view of him has been ready to fly. He was a humanitarian who left his mark on, on, on the hearts of many of us. I'm so proud that his legacy will live on through all of us. So, <clears throat> there, were, there were very several, this is off script now. <laughs> there were lots of acts of kindness too that came out of all this. I mean, I shouldn't say this, but we actually gave the wrong tax returns to a person. And that person actually sought out the person they belonged to and they met at a Starbucks or wherever it was and actually delivered the tax returns to them. So I mean, that there's, it just keeps going on and on, like Jay was saying. So, you know, I think he touched all of us in different ways, and we all looked at him in different ways. And but I think he uh, will carry on. I think that's it for us, right? So a scout is trustworthy. Loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. As an Eagle Scout, Dad's, Dad must have recited the Scout Law hundreds of times. When I was a new Scout, Dad drove me to a meeting and quizzed me on the Scout Oath Law slogan and motto. He was able to recite each, each of these flawlessly, even though he had been away from Scouting for numerous years. Following Dad's passing from this earth, his four kids, with the help of grandkids and friends, had the privilege of opening his office for one final week to assist his clients by returning their tax documents so they had time to file their taxes. As his clients came in to get their documents, each, of the, each one of them shared stories of how dad impacted them, personally and professionally. Each story embodied at least one element of these 12 attributes. Scouts, as a scout, he recited many times throughout his teenage years. Through the, these 12 attributes guided his life from a young man to a seasoned human being. So I guess my challenge to each of you in your daily lives to just do a good turn daily. Okay, 
Okay, good morning. I'm Marge Perkins. Uh, I'm the mother of this clan <laughs> of Jay, Scott, James, and Dud, who are wonderful kids. I pondered on this, and I'm going to read a poem, one of my favorite poems by a French poet. It's called The Train of Life. At birth, we boarded the train of life and met our parents, and we believed that they would always travel by our side. However, at some station, our parents would step down from the train, leaving us on life's journey alone. As time goes by, some significant people will board the train, siblings, other children, friends, and even the love of our life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum. Others will go so unnoticed that we won't realize that they vacated their seats. The train ride has been a mixture of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes, and farewells. A successful journey consists of having good, good relationship with passengers, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. The mystery prevails, that is, that we do not know which station we ourselves will step down. Thus we try to travel along the track of life in the best way, loving, forgiving, sharing, and giving. When the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who continue to travel on the train of life. Let's remember to thank God for the journey, and I close by thanking you, Bill, for being one of the passengers on my train. Thank you. Is that it? I think that's, uh, unless it's Daylene, were you? I don't know if it was Daylene or, or Karen. Um, I'm Jay's wife, um, and I want to say Bill was a man of etiquette and of a generation where men held the door open for women and, and pulled the chair out for the table when you went to dinner. He had a vicious sense of humor. Um, Every one of us was recruited <laughs> to help in the tax office, um, hand out returns, and answer the phones. And he made sure that everybody was served with dignity and grace. You were important to him. Um, he knew where everything was in those piles. <laughs> that was a mystery. Oh, it's somewhere right there. Um, we loved his antiquated ways. As much as we poked fun, it was part of him. Um, I am so grateful that he ended his journey on a high note and that our family just seven days before sat around his table and ate and drank wine. And it was a privilege to be integrated into this family and experience such a kind and gentle soul. That's all. This is Beckham. This is the, the great grandson. And we did have the privilege to meet Beckham, which we're so thankful for. Thank you. Reverend, may I use your pulpit? You know, for those of us that are left to miss Bill, Scripture in Psalms tells us that weeping may endure a night, but joy comes in the morning. Praise God for the joy of knowing Bill Hood. Amen. Yes, I agree with these kids. He was something else. 
Bill loved joking around. And as a friend of Bill's, I was a friend of Karen's first. And I remember when Karen was moving things around, she needed a place to store things. And I went with her to meet Bill for the first time as he gave us some garage space. And Karen jokingly said, this was my wedding dress, Bill. I'm going to put it over here. I'll never use this again. I will never forget Bill hitting me on the side and winking at me and saying, I hope she does use it again. Bill had big plans for the two of them. Karen finds it very difficult to speak today. I understand. It was a man she loved deeply. We all love Bill. I remember, like the family said, he loved football. And nothing made him happier than when I would pick up my phone and call him and say, Bill, what just happened on that play? Explain to me that football. Why was that a penalty? And he would just love giving me his knowledge on the phone. But I will tell you this about Bill Hood that some of you may not know, and how you would miss it, I don't know, is that Bill was a man of God, and he knew his Heavenly Father. And there's not a doubt in my mind that when he got to heaven, those doors were wide open. You know, it, it's always fun to find a little humor in anything, and it's hard to find humor in a death, but one of my favorite ministers is Joel Osteen. And I heard Joel mention a joke the other day that was so good. Three men died and went to heaven. And when the first man reached the pearly gates, St. Peter was standing there, and he said, oh, you can't come in. You have to spell a word. And he said, didn't you love to cook? He said, oh, I love to cook. He said, you can have to spell the word cook. He said, oh, that's easy, C-O-O-K. He said, enter right in. Your house is down the street. you got streets of gold here. Your robe's waiting on you. The second man approached, and he said, oh, you're the golfer. You love golf. He said, yes, I did. He said, well, you can't just enter these gates. You have to be able to spell the word golf. He said, not a problem. G-O-L-F, golf. Then the third man was coming up, and St. Peter looked at a lady in the kind of to the side, and he said, look, I need to go and run an errand. Could you let this man into heaven? Just ask him a simple word to spell. She said, not a problem. As the man approached, the woman standing there realized it was her ex-husband who had been very mean to her and her children, who was a real cheapskate. He ran up to the gates. She said, oh, no, you're not coming in that easy. You have to spell a word. And he said, well, sure, I can spell a word. I'm very intelligent. What do you want me to spell? She said, califrangelistic expialidocious. Well, I can tell you that when Bill Hood reached those gates of heaven, God probably said, Bill, you got to spell a word. And his word was love, L-O-V-E. And Bill had no trouble spelling that love word because Bill was love. And if he left it behind any memory for these kids, and for that grandchild, great-grandchild and for his children, it was that he loved them dearly. And he loved each of his clients that way. Now, I'd like to read to you the hope that we will all meet Bill one day. I'll leave that thought with you. But I'm going to read to you now what Karen Couple had to say about Bill. Knowing Bill the way I did, without a doubt, he would have been so humbled at the amount of people today and the words that you had to say at my celebration of life. He would have cried. I know that we all agree that Bill was truly one of a kind. He departed this world leaving a legacy, and that legacy is standing right up here. Reese, I heard your name so many times from your grandfather, how much he loved you and how proud he was. And there again, off script, I heard Karen say that these kids treated her so wonderfully, the few precious months she had with them. And they continue to be kind and good, just like Bill was to everyone. Bill left these amazing children and wonderful memories of a loving father, grandfather, and friend. We're grateful for each day that we are able to witness, we were able to witness his glowing smile 
his winks that he'd often give. I personally, not as a child, but as someone that loved him differently, witnessed a sacrificial love and compassion that Bill showed, not only to me, but to so many. When Bill and I first met, he was a hardworking accountant. He was a friend, but Bill never took life too seriously. He was like no person I had ever known. Up at 4 a.m. to the office by 5, coming home maybe at 5 or later, bringing book work with him. It was not just work to Bill, and that was the difference. His work was his joy. He loved helping people. There are not enough words to describe the memories and many adventures that we shared in such a short time. Bill was probably the kindest and the sweetest man I have ever known. His friends loved him. They liked just being around him, and he loved being around you. Bill was a true testament that genuine and thoughtful men really do still exist in this world. Just like Daling said, he never missed an opportunity to pull a chair out for a woman or open a door. He was the old-fashioned gentleman of gentlemen. I remember when someone would ask Bill, well, how did you two meet? And Bill would just get that gleam in his eye and that little wink, and he'd say, well, I do her taxes, of course. How many people Bill met through doing their taxes? He loved numbers, and he enjoyed his profession and delighted always in helping others through that profession. It wasn't just a way to earn a living with Bill. It was a way of life. He knew all of his clients by name, and he knew about their families. For anyone who may have missed the opportunity to visit Bill's office, as you saw the slides today, it was like stepping back in the 70s, stepping back in time. He always had three pens in his pocket and the 10-key adding machine, but the thing we did not see today was that most precious possession of his, his old Selectric typewriter. There was no doubt that Bill was comfortable in his office surroundings. He was comfortable with himself. Whenever I would ask Bill, honey, do you have a pen? He would reach in that pocket of his, give me that wink, and say, well, I've got three, Karen. Which one would you like? He always had the pens. Bill could have absolutely won first place in the most organized, disorganized office in the world. In my eyes, he was a fun man to be around. And believe me, no one knew where it was, but Bill could put a finger on anything he needed. He literally put the fashion back into old fashion, like no other person I know. He was one of the happiest, most easygoing people in the world. And of course, like the children said, when he came to Arizona, he brought the heart of Nebraska with him. He loved football, Nebraska football. But actually, after knowing Bill, he loved any football and baseball, any sporting event. And on the weekends, he would sit and do his tax work with a football game on or another activity. You could ask anyone what else Bill loved, sports and more sports. He was truly a fan. When it came to his Nebraska childhood, he told me that he grew up around a lot of farm animals but he never really bonded with those animals. They would come and go, Bill said, but then he met my, my two dogs, Dolly and Molly, my Australian shepherds, and immediately Bill had a bond with them. Bill would give all the dogs around giving them treats, as I'd say, don't give them any more treats, but Bill did what he wanted. And then he would look at me and he'd say, Karen, I just wonder why those dogs love me so much. And she'd say, Bill, all you do is give them treats. How could they not love you? I think she, that Karen actually became a little jealous because the dogs would follow Bill more than her. And when Bill would come home from work, if those dogs didn't have treats, he immediately went back out the door to go buy frozen ice cream for the dogs. You can actually buy that at the grocery store and more dog treats. 
He spoiled them rotten, just the way he tried to spoil me many times. Bill was in the back bedroom one day, and literally, the bond he had built between Molly and Dolly was so solid. Bill, without my knowing, had ruptured a blood vessel, an artery in his leg. He had hit the bed by accident, and blood was spurting everywhere. I never heard Bill calling out to me for help, but guess who did? Molly and Dolly, his best friend. They kept running to the kitchen and barking at me and barking at me, wanting me to follow them. Just like Lassie, they made Lassie look slow. And I remember going back to the bedroom, running as fast as I could, and finding Bill had already fainted in the bedroom. I immediately called 911. And the hardest thing was for those people that showed up to save his life to get near Bill, because Molly and Dolly did not want to step back. They loved Bill. That was a bond. You see, that same bond with animals Bill had with people, and that's what made Bill so special. There were so many memories. Last year we went on a cruise, and I think one of the greatest memories on that cruise was going off the ship to watch a glass-blowing expedition. They blew a little tiny turtle, just a little tiny glass turtle. It would probably mean nothing to anyone wanting a really expensive gift, but I'll never forget when Bill bought that turtle to surprise me. I will hold that turtle just like it was 10 carats of diamonds. It will mean everything to me in the future. We had just completed a quick remodel of our house. It only took three and a half to four months. <laughs> I remember Diane Bearden helped me with the selections, and she kept saying, Karen, what is our budget? So I felt badly, and I would go to Bill, and I'd say, Bill, what is the budget? Bill would never, ever give me a number. He would simply do that smile and that wink of his, and he'd say, Karen, just remember the budget. But there was no budget. He would never give me a number. Eventually, we had to move out of the house because they had to do the flooring. So we decided to go to a hotel for a week while they tore the floors up and relayed the new floors. Bill selected the hotel, and as comedy would have it, he picked a hotel right in the back of Home Depot. I had gone to Home Depot every day for four months, it seemed. And I remember Bill saying, Karen, how many more trips do you have to make to Home Depot? Will we ever get out of Home Depot? But little did he know that he had reserved a hotel room right next door to Home Depot. Now Karen could walk to Home Depot and not even get in a car. He just thought that was the funniest thing, that he selected a hotel that close to the parking lot of Home Depot. I truly admired how sentimental Bill was about these kids, about his grandchildren. He was so excited about the house being completed so we could have more gatherings and more dinners around our table with his kids. He was a warm-hearted man. And I know his memory will go on in their lives every day. It will go on in my life for many years. Dill made it, Bill truly made a difference in everyone's life, but especially mine. While his journey on the, this earth may have ended, I know that I will see Bill again, and I pray that all of you will see Bill again. Our time was cut way too short on this earth. Nothing will ever be the same without you, Bill. Until we meet again, just know that I miss you. And Dolly will always miss you. Always we will thank you for the memories you've given us as friends, me as a love, and your children. Thank you. Karen. I'd like to invite Zach to come forward, Zach, and uh, for the reading of Bill's obituary. Dear Lady, Pardon me. Um, 
as you said, I'm Zach. I'm uh, one of Bill's grandchildren, um, and I'll be reading this obituary. William Hood, also to many of all, or all of us, Bill, passed away suddenly from cardiac arrest on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, in Scottsdale, Arizona, at the age of 83. Bill was born on September 11th, 1939, in Pawnee County, Nebraska, as one of six children to Harold and Barbara Hood. Bill was preceded in death by his parents, Harold and Barbara, sister, oh, spouse, Mary, sister and brother-in-law, Ruth and Kurt, and brother-in-law, Louis. Bill is survived by his four children and their spouses, Jay Hood and Daylene, James and Scott, and Deb. His siblings, Helen, Wayne, and Craig, also known as Pete, Bob, and his current partner, Karen. He's also survived by his six grandchildren, Cody and his wife, Courtney, myself and my wife, Megan, Madison, Reese, Colton, and his wife, Alexis, and Layla. And he has one great-grandson, which is my son, Beckham, who you guys all saw up here, uh, plus numerous nieces and nephews, family friends, and business associates and clients. Bill grew up in Cozad, Nebraska, and graduated from Cozad High School in 1957. Bill was an Eagle Scout and attended National Jamboree in 1950 as a staff member. He went to co college at Wesleyan University, where he was a member of the fraternity Tai Kappa Epsilon. He graduated with a business degree in 1961. He later obtained his CPA license. Bill was very active in the JCs early in his professional career and later involved in the Kiwanis International. Bill married in 1961 to my grandmother, Marge, and had four children. Bill was a CPA prof by profession. After college, Bill worked as a countryman, worked for Countrymen and Associates in Grand Island, Hastings, and Lexington, Nebraska. He moved to Scottsdale, Arizona in the early 80s and operated Scottsdale Accounting Services for almost 40 years. He enjoyed chatting with his clients, watching Arizona sports and Husker football, traveling, taking cruises, and the Arizona desert. Bill was able to build lasting relationships with his clients through his professional knowledge, sense of humor, and genuine caring for people. Bill refused to keep a computer or monitor on his desk so that he could generally focus on his clients and he continued to use his adding machine up to the end of his life. He would be greatly missed by family, friends, and clients spanning across the country. Now I'd invite us into a moment of silent meditation and contemplation. So I'd in invite you to uh, find yourself in your seat and to close your eyes if you're comfortable to consider these questions. What did Bill mean to you? Is there a favorite memory that you have of him? Something that you treasure in your heart that you celebrate in this time? And I'll invite you to dwell on those questions and to dwell on who Bill was in our moment of silence. For our second slideshow, the family has requested that uh, the song Amazing Grace, performed by Elvis Presley, be played. And I would invite you to turn your attention to our screen.
This morning, we gather to celebrate and remember Bill, a man who has obviously touched many lives. And as we come together today in love and hope and in faith, we honor his memory and impact, and the impact that he had on so many of you. Not only have we heard the beautiful stories and cherished memories that remind us of Bill's remarkable life here today, but as I was meeting with the family yesterday and as was shared earlier, throughout this entire last few weeks, people have been coming into Bill's offices as they sorted through his uh, remaining business, offering stories of hope and encouragement, of, of professionalism. And I'm told that Bill dedicated his life, indeed, to being an accountant to providing guidance and support to a diverse clientele. In my first meeting with a family, they shared that he served millionaires, and he also served people who were barely making it. And in all that, he took pride in his work, and his commitment to his profession was unwavering. There is no doubt that Bill's passion for his career was rooted in a deep desire to help others navigate life's complexity. Because who really likes to do their own taxes? His dedication is a testament to his character and the value he placed on hard work and compassion. And as we reflect on Bill's life, let us remember the wisdom that we found in Proverbs chapter 4, a scripture that was selected by the family in his honor and memory. And as the writer commends, Bill sought wisdom and understanding, and he demonstrated a deep respect for the wisdom that he found in the world. And this respect was reflected in the lives that he touched, and as we honor his memory this morning, let us also strive to cultivate wisdom in our own lives, growing in understanding and discernment that leads to the improving of the lives of those around us, just as Bill did. And in celebrating who he was, we recognize his devotion to his work, a testament to the level of care that he had for those who relied on him. And Bill's unwavering commitment to his profession serves as a reminder for us to pursue our passions, whatever they might be, with vigor and de dedication, while also being mindful of our relationships and the importance of the connections that we have in our own lives. We are affirmed in this truth through the words of Romans 5, 2 through 5, the second scripture passage was, which was selected, which teaches us that suffering produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, of course, producing hope. Bill's life exemplified perseverance and character, and his memory serves as a reminder that hope can flourish even in the most difficult times. And as we come together today to celebrate his life, let us remember that hope that emerges from shared love and connection, even in the face of loss. For the hope of the gospel is our hope today as well. Because as we see later in the book of Romans in chapter 8, the apostle, the apostle Paul reminds us that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. And indeed, we believe that all love is God's love, including the love that all of you shared with him. And so today we can take some comfort, some hope in knowing that there is still nothing that will separate any of us from the love that we shared with those that we care about, not even death. And we can live in the hope of the promise that love is eternal. And so thanks be to God for a life like Bill's, a life that inspires us to focus on love and wisdom and hope that he embodied in so many ways. And let his memory today inspire us to pursue our own passions and to nurture our own relationships and to cultivate hope in the midst of our own struggles. Let us reflect on the love that surrounded Bill and his family and all the people that he cared about and the ways in which that love continues to resonate in the lives of those that he left behind. Amen. I would invite you to stand now for our third scripture reading, which the family has selected, and which we will read in unison. It is the well-known 23rd Psalm. 
And we will be reading this together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even through the valley, this valley. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now, as we prepare to depart from this place, I would invite all of you who have memories and stories to share of Bill to do so. Uh, the family is going to be um, offering a reception to all of you in our fellowship center. You just need to walk out the back doors here and take a left and uh, you will find uh, tables and refreshments. And in fact, I think it's almost a full-blown meal out there that they welcome you to share with them. And in doing so, to share a story of hope that you might have with the family and with one another as well. And now in the one in the name and in the name of the one who created us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sustains us, I offer you this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go forth from this place remembering Bill with love, finding comfort in the bonds of community that surround and uphold you. And may you be a source of strength and encouragement to one another as you continue through the journey of life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.